Welcome to chapter 3 of the book of Zechariah. It begins in verse 1, And the Lord showed to me, E soon, the great priest. E soon, uh, this is in the accusative, the subject of the object of the, what is mentioned, who is uh, the Lord is showing. Uh, he's showing Joshua. Uh, and Jesus in the nominative, it says, if Jesus showed, that would be correct, because that would be in the, uh, the subject would be Jesus. And we know from our previous uh, seminars in the timeline between the exile and Jesus, we featured Joshua as one of the uh, people that were was important in that period of timeline and went through how the name is tied in to Jesus. And it's Joshua in the Old Testament where Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and Yeshua, and I think in Ezra and Nehemiah, and uh, Joshua here by the King James, and then they changed it to Jesus in the New Testament. really made a mess of the whole thing. But Jesus, the name Jesus, uh, appears in Matthew 1.16, how it became the name for Jesus. It says, And Jacob engendered Joseph, the husband of Mary, from out of whom was born Jesus, being called Christos, or Christ, and from out of whom, and the whom is in the feminine, so he came from uh, Mary. And then it says uh, no more about Joseph too much, except for a few places here. And Luke has most of the places, and Luke must have went back and interviewed Mary later to get all this information, because his book is way larger than Matthew and Mark. John is not really one of the uh, synoptic Gospels that are very, very similar. In Luke 3.23, it says, And Jesus himself was about 30 years old and beginning, being as was thought, the son of Joseph. Well, we know that the Holy Spirit was the Father. And I was just... uh, looking on the news someplace and is talking, somebody's writing is, was uh, Jesus a real, uh, was was he a child of Joseph? Uh, no, he wasn't. The Bible doesn't say that he was. And then in Matthew one twenty one, it says, and she, Mary, will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will deliver his people from their sins. And He's telling him the name, give the name John, Jesus to him. In Luke one thirty one, the angel appears to Mary and says, And behold, you will conceive in the womb and shall give birth to a son and shall call his name Jesus. So we have the explicit directions to call his name Jesus to both Joseph and Mary, his mother. And then in Matthew one twenty five. It says, And he knew her not, that is Joseph, until of which she bore her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Jesus is all these in the Greek. Now, how it was actually pronounced in those days, this conjecture, but we have it in Greek written down. And so it continues now in verse 1, the great priest standing in front of the angel of the Lord and the devil standing at the right of him, Joshua, being an adversary against him. I made a little diagram because it gets a little bit on a confusing side here. We have God and we have the angel. Now, it says that these three were in front of him. The angel, if they were in front of him, they could be in front this way. If he's looking that way, if the angel's looking the other way, then he'd be in front down here. We're not really sure which way that would be. But this is what I came up with. So we have uh, uh, Joshua, whose name is Jesus, uh, and then we have then next to him, one's in the front of the angel, which I put over here because on the right it says was the devil. We'll go back there. The devil standing at the right of him, being an adversary against him. 
We see that in Jude 1, 9, where it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when litigating against the devil, reasoned concerning Moses' body, he did not dare to bear a blasphemous case, but said, May the Lord reproach you. And then we see this back and forth between God and the devil in the book of Job in chapters 1 and 2. In Psalm 109.7, uh, it says, Place the sinner against him, and let the devil stand at his right uh, being an, as being an adversary. So the devil is an adversary against us. It was against Job, against Jesus. Mark uh, chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, both of them, we have the tes testing of Jesus by the devil. Stories, you can read these. Then in Acts 10.38, it says, Jesus, the one of from Nazareth, how God anointed him in Holy Spirit and power, who went through benefiting and healing all the ones being overpowered by the devil. So this devil has power. Your old people are overpowered by him. Ephesians 6, 1, it says, For us to put on the full armor of God, for you to be able to stand against the craft of the devil. He has a craft. He's an expert at what he's doing. Talks about the snare of the devil that he lays for people to trap them. 1 Timothy 3, 7. And death is uh, his might. Uh, Hebrews 2.14, it tells us that. That's what he wants, is our death. The death of anyone to be with him. First Peter 5.8, it says, Be sober and be vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, walks as a roaring lion, seeking whom he should swallow down. A roaring lion is a ferocious beast when you see pictures of him. Uh, it's just like, boy, the roar is you can hear it for miles away. Looking to find who he can swallow down. 1 John 3, 8, it says, The one committing sin is of the devil, for from the beginning the devil sins. So he has been from the beginning of when, it doesn't say, but he's tied into our sin with man. But it could be a, at the fall of man he's talking about there where uh, they ate of the forbidden fruit, uh, Adam and Eve. Revelation 2.10, it says, By no means fear what things you are about to suffer. Behold, indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you in prison, that you should be tested. And now the devil tests us to fail. God tests us to succeed. The big difference between the two, but the same Greek word, test. No tempting and testing. I didn't do that. King James did. Same Greek word. Two different meanings. Revelations 12, 7, we're given uh, uh, instructions on who this devil is. It says, And the great dragon was cast out, the ancient serpent being called devil and Satan, Satan. So the great dragon. And then in 12, 12, Woe to the earth and to the sea, for the devil has come down to you having, uh, ha having great rage, knowing that he has a short time. In Revelation 20, it says, And he sees the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil, and Satan, the one misleading the entire inhabitable world, and having bound him a thousand years. So Satan is devil is bound. And then in Revelation 20.10, and the devil misleading them was cast into the lake of fire and sulfur. So this is what happens to this adversary that's standing in front, powerful being. I see these televangelists and they say, you know, it's trying to scare away Satan. I mean, what a joke. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any power over Satan. I don't claim to have any power over Satan. The only power I would have over Satan is any power that God gave me, and uh, I have not resisting him. Yes, that's the, but what I can do is resist him, but he's going to keep attacking throughout our whole life, everyone. 
And then in verse 2, it continues, And the Lord said to the devil, May the Lord reproach against you, O devil, and may the Lord reproach against you, the one choosing Jerusalem. Now, it's interesting. It says, may the Lord, uh, the Lord said to the devil, may the Lord reproach you. Well, why wouldn't he say, I said, I, you know, why wouldn't he say, I, I reproach against you, O devil, but he doesn't. Now, what's the second Lord? Is that the same as the first Lord? Or is this possibly Lord Jesus Christ? I believe that is it. And he did reproach the devil, came against him. Uh, is this not a firebrand being pulled from out of the fire? A firebrand starts a fire, a troublemaker more or less, in the, on the negative side, generally but not always. And Jesus was being clothed with filthy garments, or filthy uh, is the only other, it's only put, this word only appears here and in the New Testament where Jesus talks about if a man comes in with bright clothing, rich person, another person comes in with rupara clothing, so like a poor man, tatter is not very good, and this is apparently what Joshua's clothed in and stood him in front of the angel. So he's in front of the angel, and the angel responded and said to the one standing in front of him, saying, uh, remove the filthy garments from him. Now, the ones standing in front of him are probably angels. No, it doesn't say, though. So they remove the filthy garments. And he said to him, that is the second Lord in Jesus, I believe, behold, I took your iniquities, which I believe would be Jesus, because he does take the iniquities. The father doesn't take the iniquities. The son takes the iniquities. The father forgives in the judgment, but the, the, the actual taking, I believe, is Jesus. And he says, and you clothe him in a foot-length robe. And now I believe there's a man in the New Testament that has a foot-length robe. I believe it was Jesus. So apparently, being clothed in foot-length robes is something that we may be wearing in the future. And he said, uh, place also a mitre uh, uh, and a clean turban upon his head. And uh, these are things that the Old T Testament high priest wore when he went into the Holy of Holies. And they placed a mitre and a clean turban upon his head. So apparently the priesthood was in tatters. That's more or less what it's saying. But now with Jesus uh, he's changing things. He's cleaning him up. And uh, it says, and they put, uh, I crossed off this one, two, three, because you could just go through it straight. And they put around him garments. And the angel of the Lord stood. And the angel of the Lord testified to Esun, saying, Thus says the Lord Almighty, If you should go in my ways, and you should keep my orders, then you shall litigate my house, and you shall guard my courtyard, and I will give to you ones pacing in the midst of these standing. And pacing is going back and forth. Um, other words that are used, English words for that word of pacing, uh, uh, 390, is overturn, a return, or a behavior. I will give to you ones. Uh, returning in the midst of these standing, it's people that are around there, apparently. And then also in uh, Ezekiel 36, 9, it talks about people going through the uh, gates of the, uh, of the temple uh, or to go through one gate, not go back out the same gate, but they're to go all the way through. And then he says, Here indeed, O Joshua, the great priest, you and your neighbors sitting down, before in front of you. So now there's these other people sitting down in front of Joshua. So I didn't put that on there, but the other people, neighbors. For they are men that are observer of signs. For behold, uh, they, they're looking to find out what the signs are of the gods. Just as we are, we're lookers wanting to behold signs. For behold, I will bring my bondmen rising. Anatolin is also uh, the same as 
uh, the rising of the sun or uh, the east, the direction of the east. So it could be uh, my bondman, the rising, the rising of the sun or the east. Matthew 2, 9, it says, And behold, uh, the star which they, the Magi, beheld in the east, same word, led before them until having come, it stood above which place the child was. So I will bring my bondman rising. Luke one seventy eight. it says, Through feelings of compassion, of mercy, of our God, in which the rising of the height visited us, I will bring my bondman, Jesus, rising. Then in 9 it says, For the stone which I put before the face of Joshua, and that could be Jesus, a stumbling stone, upon the one stone or seven eyes. Now, the seven eyes are an interesting study. I went through the Apostolic Bible app.com app and looked and found all the places with the seven. Um, we have Revelation 1 4 uh, and the seven spirits which are before his throne. So the throne could be the stone, and the seven spirits were told are seven eyes later here in Revelation. So I mentioned in the last chapter about Trinity, and I said that God has the seven spirits. Now, are they not part of the Godhead, or are they? And if they are, then that would make it would make a ten that instead of being a triune God, would make him a a deca a deca deca ten or deca God ten persons of God. And Revelation one four. Uh, it talks about the assembly, seven assemblies. Revelation 1, 13, the seven golden lampstands, which are seven angels of the seven assemblies. And 1, 16, uh, seven stars in his right hand, the angels of the seven assemblies, all these sevens. Revelation 4, 5, and the seven lamps of fire were burning before his throne, which are seven spirits of God, and the seven eyes uh, the seven are the seven spirits. Revelation five one seven seals. Revelation five six uh, a lamb as a lamb being slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. So the lamb having the seven eyes or the seven spirits. Revelation eight two seven angels with seven trumpets. Ten three seven thunders. Twelve three seven heads on a great fiery dragon with seven diadems. 13.1, a wild beast from out of the sea with ten horns and diadems with seven heads. Revelation 15.1, seven last calamities. 15.6, seven angels with the seven calamities. And 17.7, seven, seven bowls full of rage held by these seven angels of the calamities. 17.3, a woman upon a scarlet white wild beast with seven heads, which are seven uh, mountains where the woman sits it's with ten horns. Revelation 17.10, seven kings. And Revelation 17.11, the wild beast is eighth from out of the seven. So I gleaned all of this from the Apostolic Bible app. If you're wondering where all these are at, all you have to do is look up seven two zero three three in the app, and you'll see all the places that I just read off. So it continues. Then behold, I dig and dig an excavation, says the Lord Almighty. Uh, an excavation or a pit. Uh, a cesspool is also used for this Vothron, and a uh, number nine nine eight point one, which only appears in the Old Testament. It says in Proverbs twenty two fourteen. The mouth of the lawbreaker is a deep cesspool, and the one being detested by the Lord shall fall into it. It's related to Hades in Ezekiel 26.20, uh, this Vothron. And then it talks about one's going down into the pit, uh, Hades, I believe, Ex Ezekiel 26.20, and Ezekiel 31 verses 14, and then 32, 18, 24, 29, and 
30. And it can, concludes with, and I will handle all the injustice of the land in one day. So he's going to throw them into the lake of fire, the pit. In that day, says the Lord Almighty, you shall call together each his neighbor, probably Joshua, underneath a grapevine and underneath a fig tree. Uh, probably being together in a safe place, nice place to be, instead of the opposite, which would be the pit. Chapter 4, our next video seminar, is the lampstand and the olive trees. And boy, has this got to tie to the book of um, Revelation. Hope you join us in chapter 4, next video seminar. And until then, God bless.